then they start learning that you're not a threat. You might have had cats or dogs before and you know, it's so, it, it feels like they hate you. Hi everyone, this is Guinea Dad here. Today's topic is going to be something that a lot of people asked um, during the live video or our weekly video on Thursday and Saturday. The topic is six signs your guinea pig loves you and five tips to gain their trust and bond with guinea pigs. I think toward the beginning of this video, it's going to be somewhat geared toward new guinea pig owners. And then we'll build up to, you know, level one. If we were to say level one is the beginner, level three is intermediate and maybe level six or seven now you're like complete expert and you gain complete trust of guinea pig so new owners i know that you probably saw a lot of cute videos about guinea pigs and you've seen videos like including our guinea dad youtube channel and you see how you know interactive i am with my girls peanut tofu and dumpling and you might have thought that it's really, you know, it's a breeze to gain trust with guinea pigs and they follow you and they come and command and things like that. But that would be misleading. On day one, you went to a pet store or you went to guinea pig rescue center or any rescue centers that has surrendered guinea pigs. You bring them home and most likely they're going to hide and they don't want to deal with you. Maybe they even want to bite you. Actually, biting guinea pigs is very rare, but if they feel threatened, they might. You might have had cats or dogs before and you know, it's so, it feels like they hate you. The thing that you have to understand about guinea pigs is that they're prey animals and their instinct kicks in before they think logically and they're ready to socialize with humans or other guinea pigs. Even you have to kind of approach this from guinea pigs point of view. I think the six signs that I'm going to mention, you can think of this as like a game. You're going to be presented with level one, you beat it. Now you can move on to level two and then three, four, up to six. So if you haven't beaten that certain level, I'll tell you like a tip so that you can help the guinea pig show that kind of sign of affection so you can kind of move on. So number one, guinea pig does not run and hide from you all the time. So, like I mentioned before, when you first get your guinea pig or adopt a guinea pig, they're going to run and hide from you. You know, it's it's normal. It's their DNA kicking in. They're just trying to protect themselves. If you were to look at this in guinea pig's point of view, it's almost like for us humans, someone just dropped you in the middle of jungle with a bunch of predators like tiger or leopard. You know, they're just ready to eat you and you don't have any clothes, you don't have house, you just feel completely vulnerable and you're super scared. That's exactly where guinea pig is at when they first come to your house. They are not familiar with the smell, they're not familiar with the temperature, humidity, lighting, sound, anything in your house. They're super scared. So what do you do? Before st you start socializing, you have to make sure that they are ready to get to level by providing the necessity. First is very obvious, food. You have to provide them with unlimited amount of hay. That's very important. So hay, when I say unlimited amount, I'm not talking about small bowl of it. That's still too little. Uh, you have to make sure you have like mountain of it or you have a hay rack that has a lot of hay in it. You know, that's exactly why we developed um, guinea that north series timothy hay right here so you can just put it on the rack so guinea pig can eat whenever they want to they have 24 7 access to it and all the hay in the box is clean and will not be soiled by guinea pig urine or poop the second also as important or even more important is they need to have access to fresh water all the time some people prefer water bowl but i personally prefer water bottle the reason is guinea pigs are slightly different from rabbits. Rabbits, they usually only poop in the bin 
and that they are, you know, pretty relatively well litter trained. On the other hand, guinea pigs, they poop and pee where they eat and where they sleep most of the time. So if you have a water bowl on the ground, guinea pigs love to scurry and hide somewhere or they like to run around, things like that. And then when they're doing that, they will kick their poop and the poop's gonna drop into the water and that's gonna contaminate. Make sure the guinea pig knows how to use the bottle. Like kind of touch the tip until they kind of know the water is coming out of there. Number three, the bedding. You have to make them feel like they're in a forever home. So make sure it's soft, make sure it's clean, make sure it's good. You know, Guinea Dad Liner is a perfect example. Go check it out if you don't know already. And number four, this is kind of a necessity when it comes to helping your guinea pig feel safe. You have to provide them with multiple hiding spots. If you had a guinea dad liner, you know, they have the pocket, but that's one spot. Most likely you have two guinea pigs because they're social animals and we always recommend you to adopt two guinea pigs. You have to have maybe another hiding spot. For example, guinea dad liner comes with a crunch condo box and that turns into the hidey. So, you know, if by having that extra hiding spot, you make sure that both guinea pigs feel safe somewhere in the cage without disturbing each other's privacy. So those are the necessities. This is the first thing you need to do on your first day and make sure they have everything. Then you can go into what I'm going to call adjustment period. Every guinea pig needs that to feel safe enough to interact with humans. I'm going to tell you right now, you know, some people might disagree with me or have slightly different opinion, but I would say give or take about two weeks. So during this two weeks, try your best to not touch them. Do not try to pick them up, hold them or things like that. Just, just let them be. Our final goal is to have guinea pig approach you voluntarily, not you having to chase the guinea pigs all the time throughout their lifetime. Uh, I don't want my girls to feel like I'm a threat. I just want them to think of me as a provider or someone I can trust. That's why we have this adjustment period. During this adjustment period, there are a couple things you can do to kind of prep that first social the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the smell. They're in the middle of the jungle. You have to convince them little by little that this is not a jungle. This is your forever home. So first thing you have to kind of work on is their sense of smell. They're going to live in the cage. They're going to be familiar with the cage smell, you know, eventually, no matter what, because they live there. But, you know, you're not going to live in the cage with them. You know, they're going to get close to the other guinea pig pretty fast unless they hate each other so you have to make sure that they familiarize themselves with your smell so what i would suggest is if you have old piece of clothing wash it with unscented detergent which you should have anyway because you're going to wash liners you need that liners with unscented detergent and then you're going to wear it throughout the day just one day so that the clothes will now have your smell. Take that clothes, piece of clothing or clothes and put it near or inside where they're going to hide. So for example, if you have guinea that liner and they're most likely going to hide in the pocket, so put the clothing on one side of the pocket so they don't exactly lie on it but they can lie down leaning to the clothes. You can't even put it on the cage wall itself, just hang it there so that they're always like walking by, they get used to your smell. That way, if you approach them and they sense the difference in smell, they're not going to react negatively. So one more thing you can do to make sure your guinea pig gets used to your smell. And this is the method that I used for peanut when it first got her. And um, this worked very well. So what I used to do is peanut would hide uh, in the hidey with the you know, small door opening. And she's, she was like in the back of it. So she was as far as possible inside. So she would feel at least a little bit safer in there, but still very scared. Whenever I approach, she's you know, even more scared. So what I would do is, if you have the crunch condo that comes with the guinea pig liner, and let's say they're inside, and there's an opening here, opening here, 
and I would just put my hand around here close enough so that they will see your hand and might be able to smell it but not so close that they feel like running away just stay there for a couple minutes you know if you have something to do go do something else a couple hours later do the same thing so that way they have a visual and they also have a smell that comes towards you time to time but nothing bad happens to you. This will convince the guinea pig that you are not a threat anymore. The second is the sound. If I were to imagine myself in a jungle, what would scare me the most during the night is I hear tiger growling like close by or wolves howling, you know, some predator is just waiting to eat me, you know? What I would do first is make sure the cage is far from any source of loud sound for example it shouldn't be next to tv it shouldn't be next to washing machine or dryer it shouldn't be next to refrigerators because they make humming sound that's going to scare um, guinea pigs if you live in a city where the street noise is loud it would be better if the cage is far away from the window as well. Remove any source of loud noises that has potential to scare the guinea pig. At the same time, what you do is make them get used to your sound, your voice. Later, we're going to change the strategy, but at least at the beginning, what you should focus on is you have to speak in a gentle, soft voice. For example, just say, hi. You know, just, just lower your voice. If you have like low voice, then maybe slightly higher, slightly higher pitch, slightly softer voice. Just talk to them as if you're reading nighttime story to a baby. They see some thing, a big thing, so human approach them. They're scared, but they come to, they come near you all the time, right? And they smell you all the time. And they talk to you all the time in a soft, non-alerting sound and nothing, nothing bad happens. Then they start learning that you're not a threat. You may or may not have gone through this and you, the guinea pig might still be scared or maybe they're not scared of anymore. But in case that they're not scared of you anymore, they feel comfortable with you. Let's say you have a hand in the cage, you're talking to your uh, guinea pig Maybe they don't come to you, but they don't mind exploring the cage or you know, eat drinking water or hay while you're around. Then you pass this level one. Congratulations. Now you can move on to level two. So level two, the second sign the guinea pig loves you is guinea pig. Tip three is called The reason we wait in the middle is to purposely make guinea pig become slightly impatient as if you're like just a mountain that needs to be you know conquered 